if that doesn't impress your friends, I don't think anything is going to. Hi, my name's Joel. I'm a chef tutor from the Waitrose Cookery School and today I'm here cooking a lobster thermidor. This is the perfect dish for any special occasion where you really want to bring the wow factor and impress your friends. Lobster's always quite extravagant, but that's what Christmas and New Year's all about. If you want to try it yourself, the link to the full recipe is in the description. We are going to start off today making the thermidor sauce. I've just turned my pan on. I've got it onto a nice medium heat, not too hot. So I've got two shallots here. These are Achalion shallots. I want to finely dice this. That way I'm just going to be able to extract more flavour. I'm going to get a tablespoon of butter into my pan now. It's foaming nicely. Just sweep all those shallots in and just let that sweat down. I don't want to get any colour on the shallots. I'm going to add a good bunch of tarragon. You can pick the leaves off if you want, but it's no problem to put them in whole. It has that really beautiful kind of aniseed flavour. It boosts all the other flavours, especially when it's in a creamy sauce. The next step is I need to add 300 mils of fish stock. I'm going to move this over here onto a really high heat and I'm just going to let that bubble away. You'll also notice we didn't season anything at this stage. There's no salt gone in. If we salted that now, it's going to really intensify. And then what I'm going to do is bring in a smaller pan to begin making my bechamel sauce. A bechamel is another classic French sauce. It's uh, really worth everyone learning this one, OK, because it's the, it's the mother sauce, which means you can make a lot of sauces from this. I've got this pan on a little bit warmer now. I want to be able to melt a tablespoon of butter in there, but get it foaming as well. I'm going to add a tablespoon of flour. What I'm going to do here is actually cook the flour out a little bit just like that with the butter on its own. So at this point, I'm going to start adding my milk. Now, every time that milk dissolves and it's absorbed by the flour, I'm adding a little drop more. It's really important that you don't add all your cold milk at once because the flour won't be able to absorb it. You'll knock all the heat out and it'll just take a lot longer. If you have a look at that now, it's really nice and thick. I'm going to pop the sieve over the top of my bechamel sauce and then just strain in the fish stock directly from the pan. About two to three tablespoons worth. We've got some really lovely shallot flavour, some really lovely tarragon flavour. That's all in there. So I'm going to bring this together and it's going to thin it down a little bit. The trick is to really stir that through and get it smooth again. So at this point, now that my fish stock's in and it's all nicely smooth, I'm going to add double cream. I'm going to go in with three tablespoons. So as double cream reduces, that's going to thicken as well. We're losing water and everything else is being left behind. So this is the kind of consistency I'm after now. I'm going to transfer this to a bowl to cool down. So the next thing I'm going to add is English mustard. This is nice mustard because like, it's got the heat and it's also got the uh, colour as well. Firmador sauce is a real vibrant yellow. Looks awesome. Two tablespoons. It's quite a lot, actually. And then I've also got a really lovely ingredient here. This is a whole nutmeg. I'm going to use about half of this and a microplane is the best thing to use. And then I'm just going to stir those bits through. Now this has cooled down enough that it definitely won't scramble the eggs at this stage. It needs to be quite hot to do that. Egg yolks can go in. To that, I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Everything's just going to get stirred through. Just look at the colour of that. It's amazing. I'm just going to cover it with cling film and put it onto the side and we'll come back and add the last things to that later on. Now we are going to break down two whole lobsters. So we've got these frozen whole lobsters from the Big Prawn Company. This is a really great Waitrose product. It's frozen and cooked already, so you just take it out of the freezer 24 hours before you want to use it. The first thing to do is just twist off those big claws and they'll just come away pretty nicely because they're cooked already. Um, you can do the same with the legs as well, just to give yourself a bit of space. The place that you want to put your knife into, so there's a slight horizontal line there at the, at the top of the lobster's head. Get the point of your knife right on that cross and then firmly push down and cut between the eyes, straight down like that. We're going to turn that round and we're going to do exactly the same movement the other way. Make sure the tail is nice and straight as well, flat against the board. And then just push that knife down and now you've split the lobster in half. Behind the lobster's head, there's like a kind of little natural sack there. I like to use a teaspoon to just kind of get in behind that and just scoop all of that out, okay? You don't want that stuff there, okay? That's the bit you need to get rid of there. The next bit we need to get rid of is we need to get out the digestive tract. You might see it really nice and easy to grab from the very top there. You can just use the point of your blade to just fish out a little bit of it and then hopefully when you grab it, you can pull the rest out. 
Everything else in that lobster is really edible and delicious. First thing I like to do is get the, get the tail meat out. That's the sort of majority of the lobster meat. I just kind of go in between the meat and the shell and just prise it away. And you can see how easily it scoops out. And you might be seeing this kind of red stuff here and thinking, what is that? <laughs> Should I be eating that? And it's actually roe. The roe is delicious and it makes a really nice color in the sauce. Whether you want to use it or not, it's completely up to you. What you also might find is this kind of green stuff, okay? It doesn't look very attractive. This is called the tamale. It's the kind of offal of the lobster or the, like what the brown crab meat is. It's just so full of flavor, it'd be such a shame to lose. So the next step is I'm gonna deal with the claws of this lobster. So one thing that I like to do is just actually break these down into three pieces first. So again, twisting to break them apart, just pull the claw apart. And then that should bring out like this kind of feathery sort of blade part. If you kind of break that away from the bottom part of the claw, if you just give it a pinch, if it's cooked, it should come out nice and easily like that. If you're struggling to get in there, use a skewer or a cocktail stick. Okay, that's really the best way. It's a very, very thin piece of meat. With the big side of the claw, we are gonna to need to crack this to get into it. I'm gonna hold the claw firmly against the board and I'm gonna use the back of a heavy knife and give it a nice firm tap. So that's one side done. I'm gonna turn it round and do exactly the same as the other side. And then if I then crack the shell like that, hopefully, the lobster meat stays intact, okay? It's really nice if you can get the whole claw meat out like that, you know? That's a nice presentation piece. Now for these little knuckle parts, you do kind of have access to the meat from either side. You might be able to just fish it out like this. If it's a bit tricky, just give it a nice firm tap and then you should be able to just fish that meat out. When you've got all the bits of shell out of the way on the board, any kind of leftover juice like this, it's all good stuff actually. There's a lot of flavor in there. And we're gonna repeat just the exact same process for the second lobster. I've got a lovely amount of meat and tamale there and the claw meat and everything like that. The last thing I need to do before I cook this lobster is to just break down those tails into like these lovely little bite-sized pieces. Now this is the exciting time where we bring all of these elements together. I've got my pan on a nice warm heat and what I'm gonna be going in there with is my last tablespoon of butter. I've got it nice and foaming as you can see. Now I'm gonna go in there with all that lobster meat. Everything's going in. And I'm gonna just swirl that together, just get it nicely heated through. While that's just sizzling through nicely, I'm just gonna get my last few tarragon stalks. So we're gonna get a nice little kind of fresher burst of it for the end of the dish. Now I'm getting that pan nice and warm before I add the brandy. So this is one of the most fundamental flavors in a Thermador sauce for me. If it doesn't have that lovely brandy in the background, it's not a Thermador sauce. I've got a little blowtorch here. If you've got a gas flame, you can just give it a tilt. And the idea here is we want to cook off all of that alcohol. So you don't need to flambe the brandy. It will cook away on its own. There will still be a little bit of alcohol left in the sauce, but it's much, much reduced compared to how it started off. I've just allowed that lobster to cool for a few minutes and now it's safe to add to this Thermador sauce. You can see the color of the roe like in the sauce now. So we've got the English mustard that made a nice bright yellow earlier. Now the roe's in there giving it a beautiful richness. Just check it for seasoning, add a little bit of salt and pepper if needed. I'm just gonna use the spoon to pick up these lobster chunks and fill up these lobster shells on my tray here. I've gotta make sure this is even because you're just gonna cause arguments and people will check as well. Just when we thought it couldn't get any better, we've still got our 50 grams of Gruyere to use. Gruyere's a lovely, lovely cheese, and it melts really nicely as well. The thing I'm really looking for is some beautiful browning over the top. Everything's cooked in there, it's all nice and warm. We're just gonna make sure it's piping hot, and then it comes straight out of the grill, beautifully browned. It smells just as good as it looks. That is really sumptuous, really extravagant. Imagine just serving that with, you know, fries, salad, nice crisp green salad. I always like to dip my chips in the leftover sauce as well. If you could bottle that stuff, you'd be a millionaire. There you have it, guys. Lobster Thermador. Quite a few steps involved, but nothing is more worth it, I don't think. What a perfect way to finish the year.